Hello, and welcome to this recorded e-learning module for ASIC versus FPGA design flows. My name is Frank Nelson. I am a Xilinx technical trainer and course developer. I will be your instructor for this module. This module is a comparison of the FPGA and ASIC technology design flows. This module will compare and contrast these two design methodologies and introduce you to the ISC design suite. We are also going to show you some of the advantages and disadvantages of these two design flows. This slide describes the curriculum path for ASIC designers to learn Xilinx software, hardware, and FPGA design techniques. There are five RELs to help you get familiar with FPGA design techniques. There are two modules for the technology comparison, one module for the design flow, which you're now listening to, and two for the coding conversion. For more information on these modules and courses, please visit support.xilinx.com and click on the education link at the top of the page. While these RELs do introduce the ISC design suite, good design practices, and other essential information, these RELs do not take the place of our fundamentals of FPGA design and designing for performance courses. We recommend that you take the time to attend these courses. Frankly, after working in the FPGA industry 13 years, I've never had a customer tell me the courses were a waste of time. This module contrasts the design flow differences between ASICs and FPGAs. If you are an experienced ASIC designer transitioning to FPGAs, these RELs will help you reduce your learning curve by leveraging your ASIC design experience. Please note careful attention to how FPGAs are different than ASICs will help you create a fast and reliable design very quickly. After completing this module, you will be able to describe the differences between ASIC and FPGA design flows. You should be able to describe some of the differences in methodology, verification techniques, use of test generation logic, as well as tools. The ASIC and FPG design and implementation methodologies differ moderately. Xilinx FPGAs offer a reduced design time and support later bug fixes because they are reprogrammable devices. There is also no need for design for test logic or deep submicron verification since these FPGAs have already been built and tested by Xilinx. There is also no waiting time for prototypes since the FPGAs are an off-the-shelf product and are not re-engineered for particular customer usage. An efficient FPGA coding style is required for high performance designs, however. Specifically, high speed designs may require some pipelining, especially the four input LUT based architectures like Vertex 4 and Spartan 3. As we mentioned in our last REL, your design will require some optimization. This will probably mean instantiating some of Xilinx's dedicated hardware resources such as the digital clock managers and block RAM resources. Well, first we want to provide an overall review of the ASIC design flow from functional specification to verification in circuit. This diagram just about covers it all. We're going to use this flow diagram to contrast with the FPGA design flow diagrams a little later. The first thing we want to note is that ASIC tools are generally driven by scripts. This is generally not true of FPGAs, although some utilities do have scripting capability. In this diagram, there are key verification points we want to emphasize. First of all, post-synthesis static timing analysis and equivalency checking are essential to the ASIC development process. These are especially important since ASIC development is so expensive and has large development expenses associated with it. This is emphasized when you consider the time it takes to get a sample from a foundry. Another key verification point is the testing for second and third order effects. These are required because, of course, the device is brand new and never been verified. FPGAs don't require this verification because the internal deep submicron effects have already been verified and accounted for. Xilinx FPGAs have some significant advantages over ASICs when it comes to design flow. In this diagram, we see the FPGA design flow from functional specifications to verification and circuit. 
FPGA tools are generally GUI-driven push-button flows, though some FPGA utilities also have scripting capabilities. The first thing you have probably noticed is that the verification process is much simpler. Most customers spend all their testing doing behavioral simulation and static timing analysis. They will usually spend some time doing timing simulation, but since they can verify the design by downloading the most experienced customers, will spend very little time doing timing simulation. Less experienced customers will usually spend time performing timing simulation, but only at specific transitions, until they are comfortable. We will show a more advanced FPG design flow in a couple of slides, so don't worry that timing simulation is not included in this slide. This is just going to show you what is typically done in the field. Once the design passes behavioral simulation and static timing analysis, verification is completed most efficiently by verifying the design in circuit. The reason for this, of course, is that behavioral simulation gets the majority of the bugs out of the system. Next, static timing analysis verifies the system meets our performance objectives, more specifically that our timing constraints were all met by the implementation tools. Finally, more robust amounts of testing and verification can be accomplished by downloading and verifying the system in circuit. If there are any problems found after downloading, then as needed we make changes and verify the system in circuit again. Since the FPGA is reprogrammable, this allows for faster turnaround times. The first thing we want to note is that with ASIC implementation, you have to build your HDL using their ASIC technology library. So we assume in this case that has already been done. Of course, with FPGAs, you will also have to optimize your design by instantiating dedicated resources and writing effective HDL code. Synthesis flows for ASICs are primarily driven by scripts using Synopsys Design Compiler or other tools. The ASIC design flow will include inserting design for test logic, which is not necessary for FPGAs. This is because the JTAG logic resources are already embedded in the FPGA and the FPGA's operation has already been verified. The JTAG resources require no coding, testing, or anything. They've already been built into the device and verified. Every FPGA has these resources. Built-in self-test, or BIST, and scan logic are typically not included in FPGAs. ASIC place and route is generally done at the foundry, while implementation for FPGAs is done by the designer at his desk, using that vendor's implementation tools. In our case, those tools are the ISE design suite, which includes synthesis, design entry, verification utilities, debugging, and the implementation tools all in one package. In the FPGA implementation process, most everything that you're going to need is included with the ISC design suite. This includes verification tools. The first step is to optimize your HL design for your chosen FPGA. Note that synthesis is supported for a few different synthesis tools, including Synopsys and Mentor. But some customers use Xilinx's XST synthesis tool. XST is free and included with the ISC design suite. Synthesis tools generally use a push-button flow, but also have scripting capabilities. Place and route, commonly called implementation, is performed by the user using the ISC tool set on their computer. These tools are most often used as part of a push-button flow, but running their primary programs with scripts is common. 